Dr. Sanamitra Sarkar is an associate professor in the Department of Political Science, undergraduate college, and the University of Calcutta. She is intensely involved in researching political sociology of Northeast India. As a media person, she has written several articles in newspapers and journals. She is a regular in panel expert in television news channel. Her extensive interest in research led her to direct this documentary, Anvesha, on the yesteryear women performers of the North Girls of the city of Kolkata that we just saw. The first screening of this work took place in 1998. She has won international accolades for this documentary feature in various national and international film festivals. Dr. Sandamitra Sarkar. Now this panel is actually, we are going to talk about films, whether documentary or celluloid, as we know at the popular films, and how it impacted the lives of the Dabayas. Another very landmark film, which unfortunately because of time constraint, we haven't been able to show today, and we would like to show at some other date, is a film titled The Other Song by a brilliant researcher and filmmaker, Ms. Sabadivan. We are very excited to have her here with us. May we invite Sabadivan on stage, please? Her films are based on sexuality, gender, identity, communalism, and culture. Her notable works include Dharm Yud, Nasur, Khel, Barf, and Sita's Family. She's best known for her trilogy, trilogy on stigmatized female performers, Delhi, Mumbai, Delhi. Focuses on the lives of bar dancers in Mumbai. Natch explores the lives of women who dance in rural affairs. And the third and final film of the trilogy, the other song, is about the art and lifestyle of the Dawaiyafs or the courtesans of Varanasi. So we currently have on stage Banaras and Varanasi, two people who have researched and made films on, uh, sorry, Banaras and Calcutta, two people who made films on this uh, incredible women of this. Now I also welcome another person who has great knowledge on the Hindi films, the popular cinema that we have in terms of the Tawaiyafs. And I welcome Sri Yatin Mishraji on stage. He is a celebrated Hindi poet, music and cinema scholar. He has four collections of Hindi poetry and several well-received books on Indian classical music and cinema. His book Lata Surgata won total six awards in 2017, including the prestigious National Film Award for Best Writing on Cinema and Mami Award for Best Writing in Cinema in Mumbai. His latest book, and this is most interesting, is on Begum Akhtar. It's called Akhtari Sos or Saz Ka Afsana is based on the lifetimes and music of Akhtari Bai Fezabadi, that is Begum Akhtar. He's currently working on a book on eminent lyricist, poet, and filmmaker, Gulzar. Now, you already see that we have a very daunting panel here with us, talking films. So we need an equally accomplished person to come and talk about it. And we have Ms. Poonam Saxena. May I invite her on stage? She's the National Weekend Editor at Hindustan Times, and she's here to be the moderator and the panelist. I may say that, you know, though it has been very exciting, and I initially thought when we do a seminar, what will we do in a seminar? And Pran Neville laughingly told me, ek tu bolegi aur ek main bolunga, do log seminar karnege khatam ho jayega. <laughs> but I'm so excited that we have so many people whose work has been done 20 years back, which we can cherish, accomplish, and see that work. However, we would have to edit the sessions to 30 minutes because we are running short of time. So may we say that, you know, we edit, we do the sessions of 30 minutes instead of 40 minutes. <laughs> and we begin the session on documentary film and celluloid, the role of a Dabaya. Sabha Sangamitra Yadindraji, I'm really happy to be here. So first, actually, I want to begin by asking a question from popular cinema. Uh, and then we'll come to the documentaries as well. Um, I feel that the courtesan genre of Hindi movies is quite unique. I, I don't know if such a genre 
exists in any other cinema, you know, as a genre, literally by itself. Yathindra ji, you start with you. So, do you think that our Hindi films have been made, the wife of Ole, are these some special kind of films? And have these films kept the music and the stories of the wives alive? Or have they, in some sense, you know, done them a disservice by stereotyping them? Thank you, Poonam ji. First of all, thank you for all of you that I have got the chance to talk about it in the big people. Thank you for all of you. What you are asking is that I think that the Hindi cinema has always been the same as the Hindi cinema. It is the same as the Hindi cinema. If you look at the same form of documentation, if you look at one film, तो मुझे नजर नहीं आते सिवाय जल सागर के जिसकी ओपिंग में भी आपकी फिल्म में था कि आपको बैठी की और खड़ी महफिल बिल्कुल उस तरह से दिखाई गई है जिस तरह से वो परंपरा में मौजूद है लेकिन वो फिर बंगाल का सिनेमा है और हिंदी में मेरी लिहाज से जो मैं जितना समझ पाया हूँ सबसे सार्थक ढंग से अगर कोठों की रवायत को दिखाया है तो पाकिजा और मुजफ्फर अली की उम्र आजा ये दो फिल्में ऐसी हैं जिसमें आपको सारी चीज़ें मिलती हैं वो नुहानसेस मिलते हैं जिसके लिए आप पुराने उस समय के अरा का एक एक सोशो कल्चर पॉलिटिकल एनालिसिस करते हैं पाकिजा की जो महफिलें हैं जो खास करके दो मुजरे हैं खड़े रही हो जो खड़ी महफिल है और चलते चलते जो बैठ की महफिल है उससे अलग शुरू में जब शुरुआत में जो फिल्म का इंट्रोडक्शन होता है और अशोक कुमार इंटर करते हैं मीना प्रदीप से बात करते हैं तो कोठों की गलियों में जो रवायत दिखाई गई है कि एक चज्जे से दूसरे चज्जे में जो धुने बज रही हैं और जिसमें राजकुमारी का गाया हुआ नजरिया की मारी मरी मुरी गोइया उस समय जितनी चीज़ें दिखाई जा रही हैं वो वो सारी वो रवायत है जो अवध की रवायत है जिसको नौशाद साहब ने बाद में क्योंकि गुलाम मोहम्मद की डेथ हो गई थी तो वो सारे साउंड और वो सारी चीज़ें वो उन्होंने जा करके अवध के चौक से उठा करके दिखाया था तो क्योंकि फिल्म ढाई घंटे में पूरी फिल्म बनानी है वो डॉक्यूमेंट्री नहीं है और वहाँ आप ये नहीं बता सकते कि ये पूरी तरह से दादरा है ये पूरी तरह से ठुमरी है ये पूरी तरह से बोल बना हुआ है आपको सिर्फ छू करके निकलना होता है वो चीज़ मुझे बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट लगती है और राजेंद्र सिंह बेदी की कहानी पर बनी हुई दस्तक में जो संजीव कुमार और रेहाना सुल्ताना की फिल्म है उसमें एक ललन पिया की ठुमरी गवाई गई है पैया ना पारूंगी पल गाना चढ़ूंगी तो वो जो दस्तक में जो अदन मोहन करते हैं तो कहीं कहीं पे आपको थोड़े थोड़े लोकेल में आपको वो चीज़ें मिलती हैं जो ब्रिटिशर्स के आने के पहले और जो उस समय सैनिटाइज नहीं किया था उन्होंने और सारी चीज़ें परंपराएं बंद नहीं की थी उस दौर के डिपिक्शन सिनेमा में दिखते हैं और एक बहुत पॉपुलर फिल्म है बेनज़ीर मीना कुमारी जी की खड़ी महफिल है उसमें बाहरों की महफिल सुहानी रहेगी तो मुझे लगता है कि लेकिन फिर भी आप इसको पूरी तरीके से उस रवायत की बात नहीं कह सकते क्योंकि वहाँ लहंगा पहनाते हैं वहाँ बनारसी लहंगा पहनाते हैं पेशवास की तरह से नहीं पहनाते पेशवास की स्टाइल उस समय नहीं पता है या बॉलीवुड में वो चलती नहीं है और तमाम और सारी लोकप्रिय फिल्में हैं जिसमें तमाम सारे कोठों के दृश्य हैं लेकिन दरअसल उसको पॉपुलर बनाया जाता है ना कि हम उसको हिस्ट्री के बहुत नज़दीक ले जाते हैं तो एक केस स्टडी की तरह तो देख सकते हैं लेकिन मुझे लगता है कि फिर भी रिप्रेजेंटेटिव हिंदी में अगर मेरे हिसाब से कुछ है तो पाकिजा है और पुरानी वाली प्रोजेक्ट। What do you feel? I think Jal Sagar was a very good example because that is, as he said, a very true depiction of what it was like at the time. Sankhamitra, what do you feel about the depiction in popular cinema? Depiction of popular media, not only the film. I consider that. It is a, a romantic romanticism reflected in um, consumerism. Both are reflected in the popular media. And uh, it's one side and other way, the true life of vice, the other sides of the life, are very rarely depicted in the popular media. Except two things, what you mentioned, Bakiza and Umrauja. And in most of the cases which are, I find that uh, they are portrayed as a negative character, uh, negative character who are not welcomed in our mainstream society. 
and that is really, I think, it's a taboo of the society. And uh, my documentary actually uh, intends to break this taboo. I always want to highlight the process of glamorization and the process of de-glamorization. Process of glamorization is that, that is the Hindustani classical music, earlier which was restricted within the quotas or darbar. Now it is became the part of the elite culture. It is became the part of the global culture also. But the original performers, the Eastern years performers, especially women performers, are no more. Either we made them just a prostitute or something less than that which actually they were not. They are the, the uh, we that earlier days, people used to send their children who afford for their mannerism, for their learning process. There are many things, teaching and learning of uh, poetry. These are all from their bias. But unfortunately, these days, we took away those all elements and we made them and throw out of the street that as a prostitute, which is never reflected in the mainstream movies. So, of course, we, are, uh, we have seen the great creation like Pakiza and Umrauzan, but the means, most of the mainstream movies uh, reflected that, reflected the bad spirit of the uh, presence. So this is my ideas of. Sama, what do you think? You know, I think, yeah, I mean, in terms of uh, um, uh, what Kithi Inchiti said, I agree with him completely. Uh, if we're just looking, if we are looking at the presentation of a certain culture and a certain way of life, I think Pakiza and Umrauja come closest and actually I rate even Pakiza higher yes. because there is a certain kind and that is also because of its cinematic quality. There is a certain dizzying uh, romantic yeah. element to that film, which uh, is very cinematic and amazing. But I think what I want to focus on when we're looking at popular cinema is uh, actually its complete absorption with this uh, redemptive figure of this Tawaif. See, I mean, there is, of course, Tawaif in the negative light. But Tawaif is also uh, the figure who has to be redeemed. Uh, so these are all, uh, starting from Pakisa actually, where, you know, you have uh, this woman who's fallen in bad times, or certain variants of that, which start from Umrao Jan. Umrao Jan is a child, Umrao is sold off, etc. Finds a way into the kotha. So, and then has to be redeemed by the love of a good man. And I think what, you know, so we can go into the thing about whether marriage or not marriage for the wives and whether the wives wanted marriage or they wanted to be redeemed, which frankly in my experience, because I've worked with them for uh, the film I did and then I've been working on a book with them, uh, not particularly, no one particularly wanted that kind of a redemption, I think that's important, but also the thing of, sociologically it was all wrong. The premise of the Hindi film is all wrong. You couldn't become a Tawaif if you came from outside certain castes and communities which practiced hereditary based, uh, you know, music and dance. So there was also, you could not run, you know, so you have films after films where through bad circumstances, either the daughter gets into the uh, quota or the woman finds herself in a quota. She could not have become a Tawaif. You know, uh, I think that very premise because we know so little about actually the 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 the, the social life and uh, of uh, uh, wives and there's just so little research done on it that actually that is the basic fallacy which uh, Hindi films are uh, based upon. So I mean, someone who f fell in bad times and took to singing and dancing would have been treated like a Tawaif, but would never be accepted as a Tawaif within the Tawaif community. For that, there was very long, you know, long drawn out ceremonies then that they had to go through mm -hmm. to be accepted as one of them. So, 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 uh, no, Natutarna is uh, deflowering. different, is deflowering. It is actually being adopted. You had to get adopted by some senior 
well-respected Tawaif to be accepted as a member uh, of the Tawaif community. So Tawaif, the, the, the notion of the Tawaif community itself is, was, it was a closed community. So there were very definite boundaries as to who belonged and who didn't. Uh, to me, I mean, that is the basic problem. We can go, the morality in all of Hindi films is problematic, but that I think we all know that. موجودہ جس میں تاوائف کی کہانی نہیں ہے لیکن شوبہ گوٹو سے گوایا گیا ہے میں تو سیٹے رہے ہیں آنکی میں کیونکہ وہ ایک آئیٹم نمبر ہے تو آپ کئی بار گانوں کے پر پیش میں اس پر کمرشل سیٹ اپ میں بھی تاوائفوں کی کہانی دیکھئے صرف اس لیے ایک ہیروئن کو بہت گلامرس رول لگتا ہے کہ اس کو ایک نیا آج تو بہت ساری ریال سٹوریز بنتی ہیں جس زمانے میں چیلنجنگ رول کرنا ہے تو سب تاوائف کی کہانی کر دی گئی ایک نریٹو بنا دیا اور دو بڑھیاں لانے ہو گئے اس میں ایک لطا منگشکر نے گا دیا ایک آشا جی نے گا دیا اور اس پر بہت سیٹیاں بجی اور بہت پیسے آئے تو اس کا ایک کمرشل آسپیکٹ بھی ہے وہ سارے فلم ٹریڈ میکزینز میں دیکھیں وہ فلم جو ہے وہ قدر کا سکندر اس میں جو نانچ ہے ریکھا اور امیتاب سلامیش سلامیش وہ آئیٹم نمبر ہے وہ کسی توائف کی کہانی نہیں کہتا ہے وہ کسی بیٹھ کی محفل کو نہیں ڈیپیکٹ کرتا ہے تو آپ اس میں سے کوئی آپ اس کا کوئی سوشل نریٹیو نکالنا چاہیں تو اس میں کچھ ہاتھ نہیں آنے والا ویسے پیچھے چلے جائیں تو بہت ساری فلموں میں کچھ بہت اچھے اگزامپل ہیں روشن کا ایک نوزک ہے نو بہار میں کجرائی متواری مدبری دو اکھیاں پیا توری دو اکھیاں اب یہ جو تھمری ہے بیٹھ کی محفل کی تھمری ہے بول بناو کی वैसे ही ठेके पे आती हैं सारी चीजें वैसे ही उसमें सारी हरकतें हैं लेकिन पूरी फिल्म कमर्शियल सेटअप की फिल्म है और उसमें बाइयों से कोई लेना देना नहीं लेकिन अकेला वो गाना फिल्म इंडस्ट्री में खड़ा है जो टिपिकल दादरे का रिप्रेजेंटेशन है जो कभी कोठों में सादरा दादरा मुबारकबादी में कहा जाता था तो आप चीज तो निकाल सकते हैं किसी के पास कोई संस्कार है जैसे सलीम साहब बैठे हुए हैं आपने बहुत सुंदर लिखा है बिग अख्तर पर कि कैसे जब उनकी महफिलें परवान चढ़ती थी تو ہفتوں مہینوں لوگوں کو انتظار کرنا پڑتا تھا کہ ان کی محفل میں انٹری مل جائے اس کے لئے پیسے جمع کرنے پڑتے تھے اس کے لئے باہر آکے کچھ انعام اکرام رکھنا پڑتا تھا دروازے پہ تھوڑا سا اس کا ریپرزنٹیشن مظفر علی عمراو جان میں کرتے ہیں جب عمراو کے لئے نواز صاحب پہنچتے ہیں تو بولے پانچ تولے سونے لگیں گے تو بولے اس کا انتظام کرنے گاؤں جانا پڑے گا تو وہ لے کہ ابھی تو لائن لگی ہے سونا دینے والوں کی تو وہ ایک روایت کی اور اشارہ ہے کہ ان کی ایک کیا استطیق ہے سنگ میترا جی نے بہت اچھی بات کہی کہ ہم لوگوں نے فلموں نے اس کو پرسیٹیوشن میں ریڈیوز کر دیا یہ سب سوشل ریفارم ہونے کے بعد یہ ساری باتیں ہوئی پہلے ایسی کوئی بات نہیں تھی پہلے دو ٹرم چلتے تھے اگر کوئی بڑے آدمی کی نواب صاحب کی راجہ 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 مہاراجاؤں کی بیٹی ہے تو اس کا نام وہ شہزادی کہلاتی تھی اور یہ ساری ناشنے والیاں مال جادی کہلاتی تھی کیونکہ یہ سرف ڈیپینڈنٹ آگر تھی ان کو مال جادی کہتے تھے اور ان کو ویسے ہی سممان حاصل تھا جیسے کی کسی دوسرے کو ملتا ہے لیکن یہ دیکھا جاتا تھا کہ ان کی سوشل ویلو کیا ہے ان کی کیا حیثیت ہے خود بیگم اکتر پچھلے چھتابدی کی ہیں اور بہت سارے لوگوں نے ان کو دیکھا ہے ریکھا جی بیٹھی ہوئی ان کی ششہ نہیں ہیں تو ایسے بہت سارے لوگوں کی ایک حیثیت تھی کہ وہ اپنے وجہ سے کوئی بھی چیزیں کروا سکتی تھی ان کے ہاں اس طرح کا کوئی کہانی کچھ کردار ملتا نہیں لیکن جب سنیما میں آتے ہیں تو اس میں آپ گھال میل کرتے ہیں اس کو آپ ملو ڈرامیٹک بناتے ہیں اس میں تمام وہ ساری چیزیں ڈالتے ہیں اور ترباگ کی بات یہ ہے کہ جن کو کوٹھوں کی روایت اور اتحاس کے بارے میں پتہ نہیں ہوتا وہ اسکرپ لکھ رہے ہوتے ہیں تو اس لئے یہ دکت ہوتے ہیں یتی بھی جی جو آپ نے کہا ہے what Samar said I just want to pick up on that the thing about the Tawaif having to be redeemed that actually has its roots in history right because after 1857 when the British just crushed a lot of the local culture and punished the wives because they had helped the revolutionaries. And after that, um, you know, when the national, nationalists came, uh, they looked at this as a symbol of decadence and the feudal system, you know. So the wives had to be, were not looked at as repositories of art and music and dance. 
but they were seen as uh, you know just remnants of that uh, decadent feudal culture. Yeah, I mean that's the, the seeds go back much earlier. Actually, colonialism itself, the way it, you know the you know the when you have these colonial ethnographers <laughs> who were traveling India to figure out what India was all about it was new to them. So for them, even you know the the, the way they were writing about or what they understood of Tawais or the Tawais social status. Uh, there was, you know, which was they not being able to make that much sense of it. So, actually, the first time that you have the Tawaif being called a prostitute is in colonial rights. That's right. And uh, because they could not actually uh, could locate the Tawaif in, within their uh, moral landscape. So, it was very Victorian moral landscape. She did not fit in. And also it served, of course, colonialism uh, perfectly to demonize Indian society and to, you know, paint it as inherently decadent, etc. I think nationalism after that, you know, jo rahi sahi kasarti ho, nationalism nikali, you know, so they, uh, the whole soul uh, uh, adopted the morality of the colonial masters and uh, where Tawaf became an embarrassment. Uh, the, the, the wife as a redemptive figure, the, the one who needs to be, has to be redeemed, actually comes in with Gandhian morality. Gandhi looks, Gandhi looks down on the wife. But actually it's there even before in 1919 in Premchand Seva Sadhan. That is, exactly that, the is that is Seva Sadhan yeah. is uh, after all very much influenced by Gandhian morality, you know. So Seva Sadhan is a prime example of uh, the redemption of the Tawaif. <laughs> and uh, so, and uh, then you have, the, say, uh, Pakiza. Pakiza is based on that notion of this young, idealistic young man who will reform, who will, you know, redeem uh, the troubled Tawaif, uh, you know, who, who, but she, there's some, she has to have, a, she is respectable herself. Because she belongs to that family through her father. She's, you know, uh, his cousin and all of that. So, if you see that in almost a lot of these films, the Tawaif who is redeemed, except for some exceptions, she herself comes from, has res so called respectable mores. Somewhere or the other, she found herself way into this morass and then has to be redeemed by the good man. So, I, I just want to ask both of you uh, very quickly, so that everyone gets a, a, a chance to talk. When you were doing your documentaries, how difficult was it to, you know, just find women and get them to talk and open up and in the research? Was it difficult? It is a really difficult journey because that time I was a resident of Ramakrishna Mission Institute of Culture. And uh, that time just I have joined in my college. And suddenly I met one girl who was very young, who was studious, but always preferred to maintain a safe distance from other girls. And uh, I asked her why you are not mixed up with the other girls or something, something, but he, she always preferred to maintain her silence. One day, <coughs> so that time I was very young, just I passed my masters and I have joined in college. And I try, uh, and that time I developed some kind of rapport with that girl. Then my senior fellows, who are the faculty members, they called me and said, they, do you know who is she? I said, no, I don't know, but she is a little bit different from the others, so I'm trying to make a friendship with her. <laughs> then I came to know she is the daughter of one Baiji from Bobasa. So because of that, she is a good student, but most she preferred to maintain the safe distance. Then I told her, can you take me to your place? She said, yes, I can, but she maintains again silence. I went with her and near about, it took near about one year, one year. Every day I used to go with her and nobody uh, spoke to with me. So they say you are coming from some NGO or something, something, and just the sense of distrust was there. And after one year, they opened up. Then I started to 
know about their lifestyle. Even that time, at the night time, there is no boy child was allowed to spend night in any quarter. If they have a boy child, they used to send, even the age is six months or eight months, to spend night others' residence, not in the quarter. That custom was followed during that time also. That, that, uh, that time the year is 19, uh, 8, 97, 97. So if the road, the Bobaza road is 1997, the quotas are 1897. The difference between the two areas is so wide. So it was a quite difficult journey uh, to make, to convince them that I don't have any bad intention to misuse them or something like this. Just I want to portray their uh, music, their dance, their lifestyle like this. To. This is the, uh, it was really difficult journey. Sabha, what was your experience? Well, it was very similar. I started researching for uh, the film on uh, you know the other song uh, in about 2001-2002. I eventually made the film, completed the film in 2009, and there was a reason for that. I mean, you know, the, this trilogy that came into being. It came into being simply because I was not making a headway on uh, the Tawaif uh, front. Uh, the kind of, uh, you know, I mean, even if I got a chance to speak with people, the, I mean, unfortunately, we couldn't screen the film here because it's two hours long. But uh, that, you know, the, 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 it, it took a very long time to get that kind of a comfort level and trust going. So, you know, waiting for that to happen, I actually wandered around and, you know, got and, you know, while researching uh, related things, the other two films came into being. So, yes, it was difficult. You know, I, I you know, it was not surprising. I I'd expected it to be difficult because the, of the kind of stigma that uh, is uh, attached to the wives. Um, I mean, why would they want to, why would singers or, you know, women who are now retired, why would they want to admit to a certain background which has stigmatized them? And they've moved away from that. So it was difficult. And there I came to know that Nath Uttarna is a mandatory if you want to join in this bi culture. If that uh, thing did not take place, they will not allow to enter in your internal surroundings. No, that, that's an earning thing. No, I mean, that no, mandate no, no. in the sense that that is central to the whole thing. No, you know, no, 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 no. Once you reach puberty, then that also, it is the highest, you know, earlier it used to be the highest bidder who used to be, <coughs> who would then, uh, you know, have that privilege of deflowering, uh, you know, thus far uh, virgin uh, uh, tawaf. But uh, even later on, through till the, about the 80s, till you know the, the Tawaif culture died out in Banaras by the early 80s. But uh, there, in fact, it had become you know the Tawaifs. Uh, once they became friends, there would be jokes about it also that the same Tawaif would go through a Natubharna ceremony five times. Yes, you know, so with is, different people. But that there is the, you know there's the whole thing of because. It is also a marker of uh, Mardangi for the men actually. They are willing to pay that uh, uh, money for it. No, in Kolkata you will find lot of girls are coming from Banaras, Lucknow because in UP it was banned and in Kolkata it is not banned. So there is a, the difference, legal structure is different. When they are coming from Banaras or Lucknow, where it is banned, sometimes, you know, they are left by their family or something. This kind of girls are also joining in this profession. But when they, have, they are going to join this profession, they perform this. Whether they believe it or not, that is their identity. That finally they are professionally, formally joined in this system. Because in UP it is banned. In only Kolkata, uh, only Kolkata, it is uh, legally, uh, still it is going on. Poonam ji, this is aspect too. One aspect is very good that you are telling us. One aspect is that there is no need to be able to do it. But no one is safe, no one is safe, no one is safe, no one is safe, no one is safe. और ये सिर्फ तवायफ के साथ ही नहीं है देवदासियों के साथ भी है जब वो मंदिरों में जाओगे और पंजाब कर रहे हैं 
किसी को पसंद कर लिया और वो उनके साथ हमेशा के लिए रहेगी उनकी जिसके लिए रक्षिता शब्द है कैप्ट कह लें या दूसरी पत्नी के रूप में और उन्होंने पूरी जिंदगी उनके साथ गुजारा किया उनके लिए घर दिया उनको उनके खर्चे देते रहे बाकायदा वो एक पार्लर फैमिली रन करती रही और उसका सबसे बड़ा उदाहरण केसर भाई केरकर जी है सेठ विठल दास लदिया खान साहब ने इतने पैसे मांग लिए कि केसर भाई गा नहीं सकती थी सीख नहीं सकती थी विठल दास साहब ने कहा कि मैं दूंगा वो उनकी पत्नी बन के रही और एक एक राग उस जमाने में फिफ्टीज अर्ली फिफ्टीज में अल्लाह दिया खास साहब थोड़ी सिखाते थे विवाह सिखाते थे सुहा सुगराई सिखाते थे और कहते थे पाँच हजार रुपये पाँच हजार रुपये उन्नीस सौ बावन में कितने होते हैं आप सोच सकते हैं तो एक विठल दास के यहाँ से जाता था सारा कुछ और वो बिल्कुल रानी महारानियों की तरह रखी गई केसर भाई yes, तो ये चीज मतलब इसका एक ही आस्पेक्ट भी जुड़ता है सामाजिक कि किस तरह से और ये ये यूपी में बहुत हुआ है बहुत सारे लोग हैं और एक एक चीज हुई जब देश आजाद हुआ हमारे सूचना प्रसारण मंत्री हुए बीजी केसकर साहब तो उन्होंने एक जियो जारी कर दिया कि जो बाई जी लोग हैं वो ए में कहा नहीं सकती आपको वो सैनिटाइज करने yes. के लिए बैठ के और उन्होंने कहा कि आपको शादी करना होगा शादी का सर्टिफिकेट दिखाना होगा और या फिर देवी लगा होना देवी लगा तो सब देवी लगा लगा के ये सारे लोग कन्वर्टेड हैं सब लोग देवी हो गए क्योंकि उनको पैसे चाहिए थे उनको वो एक नेशनल रिकॉग्निशन चाहिए थी और रिकॉग्निशन ए आई आर से आ गई थी तो वो उस समय से फिर बदलना शुरू हो गई और आपने तो अर्ली एटीज कहा है मैं तो कहता हूँ कि अर्ली सेवेंटीज से ही समाप्त होना शुरू हो गया शारदा एक्ट आया है देवदासियों का बंद किया है 54, 52 में उसके बाद से यतेंद्र जी आपने बाईजी इन अर्ली फिल्म फिल्म सॉन्ग्स पे पेपर भी लिखा है और आपने अभी ए आई आर के का जिक्र किया कि किस तरह से दी हैड टू बी मैरिड टू सिंग मुझे कभी कभी लगता है मैंने लुक एट द हिस्ट्री दैट दे वर वेरी रिसोर्सफुल आल्सो जब दे वर भी चीजें एक दौर खत्म हो रहा है तो रिकॉर्डिंग्स करने लगी गानों की फिल्म्स में आ गई यू नो दे अडॉप्टेड टू चेंजिंग सर्कमस्टेंसेस एंड ग्रेट फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी मच मोर देन द मेन सिंगर्स वो बहुत हो रहा था वो फुल सिंगर्स वो बहुत होने लगा और फिल्म में फिल्म की एक्ट्रेस होना या फिल्म के लिए गाना बड़ी बात होती थी तो अगर आप फिल्म की एक्ट्रेस हैं और आप दादरा और ठुमरी गाती हैं तो सारे बड़े रिकॉर्ड कंपनियां आपको लेबल सब आपको यूज करते थे अख्तर भाई फैजाबादी के लिए तो आपका मेगाफोन इश्तेहार ही करता था कि अख्तर भाई फैजाबादी फिल्म स्टार इनके गाने सुनिए और जितनी पुरानी मतलब अर्ली ट्वेंटी उन्नीस से उन्नीस सौ तक का अगर आप यहाँ देखें तो उसमें तमाम सारी बाइयाँ हैं जो फिल्मों में काम कर रही हैं लेकिन सबने अपनी पहचान के लिए नाम बदल दिया है नाम क्या है मिस पर्ल मिस बदामी मिस रोज मिस गुलाबी मिस हीरा मिस डायमंड ये सारे फेक नेम्स हैं इन लोगों ने अपनी असली पहचान छुपाई और एक एक निक नेम के साथ ही लोग आ गए और बाद में अगर वो आप सैगल अरा देखें अमीर भाई कर्नाटक की अरा देखें तो जितने दादरे और जितने ठुमरिया फिल्मों में फिल्म सॉन्ग की तरह यूज हुई है वो कौन देता था वो यही लोग प्रोवाइड करते थे क्योंकि अगर आप फिल्म डिस्कोग्राफी चेक करें तो उसमें लिरिसिस नहीं है वो ट्रेडिशनल या पारंपरिक करके दिया गया है तो वो ये लोग अपना उनके साथ एक डीलिंग रही होगी कंपनियों के साथ कि हम दो गाने इसके लिए गा देंगे उसके एवरेज में दो गाने रिकॉर्ड लेवल पे जारी हो जाए तो एक एक जो फिल्म इंडस्ट्री का हिंदी फिल्म इंडस्ट्री का जो शुरुआती है है बिल्कुल शुरुआती बोलती हुई फिल्में हैं उसमें बाइयों का बहुत बड़ा योगदान है सिनेमा के लिहाज से भी गाने के लिहाज से just one last question then i think i can take only one or two questions from the audience just one last question why is begum akhtar held us in thrall for so long unke upar itni films bani hai theater productions hai aapne khud abhi ek kitab likhi hai which i would like to uh, it's called akhtari and it's edited by yadindra ji what was so special about begum akhtar compared to a lot of the other मुझे लगता है कि वो रिबेलियन थी उन्होंने वो तोड़ दिया था वो जो रवायत थी वो बहुत सारी चीज़ों में उन्होंने रिबेल किया और कॉमन मैन के साथ जुड़ी उनके लिए ये था वो एक ज़माने में इतनी मशहूर थी लखनऊ में कि बड़े घर की औरतें डरने लगी थी कि बेगम अख्तर आई मतलब मेरा शौहर मेरे हाथ से और लेकिन उन्होंने वहाँ भी दोस्तियाँ कर ली बड़े घरों में घुस के और महिलाएँ ज़्यादा बुलाती थी उनको उनके साथ दोस्तियाँ करती थी उन्होंने जा कर के बहुत ही शरीफ जो शरीफ जादों की जगह थी हजरत गई वहाँ पर अपना कोठा बसाया वो गई नखास में बसने नहीं गई 
और तो वो हर तरीके से एक एक जैसे दीवा कहते हैं जो जो एक लार्जर देन लाइफ परस्पेक्टिव का आदमी होता है बहुत बहुत आकर्षक थी बहुत खूबसूरत नहीं थी लेकिन उन मैंने जो काम किया जो सारे जितने पुराने लोगों उसके बारे में मैंने बात की वो हर आदमी मेस्मराइज है दुनिया भर की कहानियाँ मशहूर हैं उनके बारे में उनके सजने सवरने के उनके गहने लेने के और वो बहुत दयानत दाल थी बहुत पैसे लुटाती थी बहुत खर्च करती थी उनकी दो शिष्याओं का मैंने इंटरव्यू किया है रीता गांगुली जी का और शांति हिरानंद का तो उनके तो मुझे लगता है कि वो एक एक करिश्मा होता है और वो उन्होंने और गजल गाया उन्होंने उनको गजल को उन्होंने सेमी क्लासिकल जॉनर बनाया उसके पहले गजल कभी इस तरह से विधा के रूप में नहीं मानी जाती थी तो मुझे लगता है और कुछ भाग्य भी होता है कि कौन खूबसूरत है जैसे आज भी हम लोग मधु अभी कोई कह रहा था कि मधुबाला और नरगिस के आगे कोई है ही नहीं तो अब मधुबाला मीना कुमारी जैसे हो गए मुझे लगता है कि इसमें शास्त्रीय गायन में बेगम अख्तर हैं